All right, everybody. Familiar faces. How will Saya? <laughs> We're talking about uh, innovation and inclusion. Um, and at the intersection of that is technology. Uh, we think a lot about technology at MasterCard. Uh, we like to think of ourselves as a tech company. Um, technology is a two-sided sort. Um, in many ways, it creates a lot of opportunity. Billions of people have been pulled into a digital economy. At the same time, it causes some issues. And as of late, uh, people are worried about the issues that AI, AI might, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. might bring about. Uh, is that which side of the sword are we going to strike with when we um, implement AI at a broader scale? Now, um, there's a lot of challenges going on, so we know all of them, so I don't need to repeat. Uh, but you know, climate change has not been solved. Uh, we're dealing with the consequences of a pandemic, and uh, there's a ground war in Europe and so forth. So the stakes are high. And there's a risk that when we think about innovation and inclusion, that the inclusion part gets forgotten because we focus on the short term. And inclusion is oftentimes a longer term undertaking. So um, how do we get it right? And how do we make sure we keep that balance? Um, that's what we're going to talk about right now. Um, the, uh, it takes technology. Um, that's what we do. And it takes an ecosystem that gets technology to thrive. And that is what the IFC does, amongst many other things that the IFC does. So I'm delighted to be here uh, with Magda Diop, the managing director of the IFC. This is not an interview. Um, um, we are actually going to try to have a conversation with each, each other and have you witness our, uh, our chat. Um, so I want to kick us off um, thinking about innovation and inclusion, and how do we align one with the other? And that's taking a look back before we take a look ahead. Um, so at the IFC, yep. what have you learned over the last three years? With everything that was going on, what do we need to do going forward? What do we, what do we need to get right? We need to, Michael, so thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be right. with you. And I'm not as cool as you today. I have my my tie because we have our spring <laughs> meeting. So otherwise, I would have been uh, uh, without I a tie. I put my tie back on later. Yeah, but uh, I, it's just uh, um, uh, no. But, it, but what we learn is that first of all, we need innovation. Innovation is important. When you have innovation, you can adjust to, to, to the new reality. And uh, and we have seen it. For instance, a lot of companies in emerging economies had a problem. Uh, were, were, were profitable company, but with this shock, they find themselves in a difficult situation. So we developed things like the distress assess recovery program, which help companies to who are you know were profitable to be able to go through this period, which was quite quite, quite difficult. We also worked on uh, uh, ensuring that we bring more working capital. We also think that uh, cap, uh, investment or uh, equity is the only thing that we need to, to bring for a company. But working capital and trade finance was very important, we realized during this crisis. A lot of small order were not able to access uh, trade uh, financing, be able to export, be able to, uh, to, to go to, to market. We realized also that it was important to work on the value chain, the local value chain, because the international and global value chain was uh, disrupted. You had the farmers in, in, in Africa in Africa who could not access some markets, some small market uh, manufacturing companies who could not access the, the market. But also we, we, we learned that uh, while we are doing that, we, we need to work on global, global public goods, uh, like, such as climate change. And there were an opportunity here to be able to address within this crisis, and when we are revisiting the business plan of some of the company, to look at it in, in that perspective, and to ensure that they can they, they can be part of the rebound when the rebound in, is is in place. Lastly, it was a good opportunity also to 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 do some reforms, and I think uh, tech was very important in, in that process. Uh, uh, you know, I I, I'm, I'm, uh, I was part and I'm still part of the broadband commission, and we have the ITU and uh, other other bodies work on what you call the moonshot Africa which was how to can accelerate access to, 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 to digital services in Africa so that people can respond to the crisis. And uh, we developed a lot of, of, of South-South cooperation. Uh, for instance, the traceability mechanism and technology that was developed by the Korean was extremely useful to be able to do to increase traceability in a, in, a, in low income country and therefore to stop the, the, the growth of uh, the progression of, of, of COVID a virus. So all these kind of things were uh, uh, happened during the, the, during this time. We were able to increase our our, our lending 
And building on that, we have uh, this year, we will be certainly having a record, record year uh, of lending. This is uh, a good, good news. But um, it, it's because we've been able at that time to identify better the needs of some of those companies which are facing those, those shocks. You know, I can just say that this bridge between short term and long term when it comes to inclusion, the IFC has been really helpful to be that long term lender while everybody else is really focusing, focusing short term. Yeah. But we did it with you also, you help us very much because what the solutions that you have develop uh, uh, um, a lot of the architecture that you, you, you help building in, a, in, in financial uh, uh, inclusion were extremely useful for other, other, other type of public uh, response. To give you a sense, a lot of the government were trying to, 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 tra to transfer resources to, to, to the lower in, uh, income during the, the crisis, so to, to, uh, as a form of uh, so, a social safety net and, uh, uh, and, and others. And uh, it's because there were investment, and we saw a huge difference between countries where you had an investment uh, uh, before and good policy on financial inclusion, and those who were able to respond very quickly to the, to the crisis. So you did a lot of good. A lot of learnings. Now, when you do a conversation versus an interview, this would be the question at the time when uh, um, uh, Makhtar asked me something. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, one of the topics that we said we should be talking about was, you know, where is technology going? So what are you guys seeing? What are we seeing? And um, one, one of the, the bigger themes here is with all these challenges and complexities uh, going on, there's one common theme that is affecting all of us. And it's fundamentally a good thing, uh, which is the world is getting more digital. Yeah. So if we think about that, that trend overall, and we start to think what that means for all of us and what it means for inclusion and innovation and so forth, um, just how fast this digitization of the world is accelerating is really fascinating. Um, I'll give you a fact, uh, factoid. At the end of 2022, for the first time, um, the US consumer online spend, online spend, i.e. internet and so forth, cost $1 trillion. Uh, it doubled in four years. And you know, the part of the pandemic is in it where we all needed to do things online because there was no other option, not all, uh, but certainly in developed countries where that was available. Um, at the same time, you talked about broadband, Mukhtar, the, uh, um, the people online and uh, on this planet. The number increased from 53% in 2019 to 64% in 2021. We added 800 million people. That's a lot of progress. Nevertheless, 64%, there's 36% are not online at all. And that is where I think uh, the pushes you heard from, uh, um, from Hans earlier on and so forth. So in this uh, rapidly digitizing world, how do we focus on something that's really relevant? And the, the way we think about this as, uh, as a company and that many of our private sector and public sector partners talk about this is in a principled fashion. Um, you know, the next dog walking app might not be the most relevant solution. So the, asking the question, what is the real, the real problem out there? Who has what problem that is an unlock for past to growth? You know, things come to mind when you think about who's been hardest hit by, uh, by the pandemic, small business. Um, what is small business's biggest problem is access to capital. How do you do that? Well, you, you can solve that with AI. You can solve that with all, a range of technologies from open banking, fintech, and so forth. I won't bore you with the details. So principle number one, is it solving a problem? Principle number two has to be trustworthy. There's a lot of people right now that worry about how many times do you get an SMS a day that says your Netflix account has been compromised? Well, there you go. Do we, does that, is that trust inspiring? No. Imagine you have just joined the digital ecosystem, then you're going to be freaked out by stuff like that. So trust, does it solve a real problem? Is it trustworthy? And the last aspect of it, it needs to be inclusive. Now, this is the Cl Inclusive Growth Summit. So of course, uh, we're going to talk about inclusion. And we think about that at the Center of Inclusive Growth uh, all day long. But it makes good business sense. If it's not inclusive, it's not going to scale. And if it doesn't scale, it doesn't matter. Um, so it makes good business sense for us to do that. So that's how I look at the technology part of, uh, of the ecosystem and where we drive in, uh, you know, where we drive inclusion. And now, of course, we are nine minutes in. We have not talked about chat GBT. Uh, so we, should, we, 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 this is not a good conversation if we don't. So very quickly, I mean, the way we look at it, uh, 
we cannot afford not to lean into AI. All these challenges, we need to innovate ourselves out of it. So we're looking for investment partners, long-term pro. Uh, you know, partners across the private sector have trustworthy AI, uh, AI that we can lean into, um, and that's uh, that is important. It has now been available to so many more people. My wife told me over the weekend she just asked ChatGPT to redo her LinkedIn profile, and she said it's so much better. So, <laughs> so there you go. It's very practical uh, for us. A uh, nothing new. Um, more important us for us is the general. Uh, theme of AI, cloud, 5G, get solutions to more people to solve real problems everywhere in the world. But trust in, you know, technology is only one thing, finance, the ecosystem, VCs, everything that's around it. Without that, we cannot operate. We need you, and I'd be curious um, about your view on no, Absolutely, Michael, actually, it's, a, it's interesting. AI is, actually, we have a panel uh, this afternoon, or two, this afternoon with, uh, which will include uh, the at the World Bank. At the World Bank yeah. uh, annual meetings, not here. <laughs> right, okay, but because I didn't know about that panel. <laughs> but, that panel <laughs> but what is interesting in that panel is we have a, a, a woman from Africa, she's Senegalese, I'm sorry, uh, uh, who will be, is the first tenure, the second uh, black woman uh, computer uh, professor tenured in a, in a tenure track in Ivy League University. And she specialized in AI. So it shows that. Uh, and there are also a lot of other Africans somewhere in, 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 uh, in the world who are doing similar, similar work. I was yesterday with the CEO of OCP talking about what they're doing on AI, and they were talking that they're running now uh, mines uh, with or, or, uh, IoT only. So the world is, and, and the good, is, there are a lot of good, but also we have to be, to be careful to make sure that we have the right. Uh, but there's something we don't talk enough about is uh, cybersecurity, which is also, mm -hmm an important uh, risk that we have seen during, during the pandemic. Uh, and uh, I was visiting Silicon Valley and I was visiting Cisco uh, a, a couple of years ago. And I will be surprised uh, that day what the, the, the monitoring system of Cisco was showing as a source of the largest number of attack in the world. Guess which country was it? It was Zimbabwe. Okay, all right, I was not guessing okay. that. <laughs> Nobody would have guessed, guessed that. It's clear that someone hiked an IP address from there and was playing with, with that. So it means that uh, another African country, uh, uh, two, two months later, had all their banking system shut down because of, of uh, cyber security. So let's not forget that. Second is the policy uh, uh, framework to be able to, for you to develop all, all these new applications which we're helping and addressing the last mile. Data localization is a very important debate today. We have data center being built in a lot of emerging economies, and there is a you know, different view about data localization. Infrastructure sharing is, is, is an important topic also that we are discussing that will be essential in, 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 uh, in um, uh, helping broadband coverage. The third one is how we, we can have a, a sandbox regulation to be able for you to apply all this innovation in in in, this, in, in, um, in in countries, so I uh, I see that you are doing a lot of, of, of that, Michael. Can you give us some 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 example of what you have been doing in of pushing the regulation of your innovation? Right. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things when it comes to scaling technology is. Um, a regulatory framework that aligns across borders because of course technology doesn't really know any borders, the digital economy doesn't. And we're finding um, that there's high degrees of fragmentation that's not helpful. So we, we like what the IFC is doing and driving that dialogue. We're trying to do the same thing. I think a really interesting case study is in data privacy. The Europeans took the pen uh, back in 17, 18 and started to write something called the GDPR. Uh, which is a data privacy bill, basically. And uh, you think about where we are today, we still have many, many large economies where there is no clear data privacy landscape, regulation, and you start to think of what that does to scaling uh, solutions when people don't trust them because they don't know where their data is going, who's benefiting from it, who's selling it, and so forth. So um, a way, I, I think, where the private sector is needed we should partner with you and we should do things together. We need to talk to the regulators, but also the private sector has an obligation, I think, to lean in before 
and self-regulate. So what we've done at the time, it's just an example, we're just a small part of the story, is to say, all right, what does thousands of pages of regulation actually mean? It means you own your data, you, you control it, you benefit it because it's your data, and it's the industry's job to keep it safe, as simple as that. We actually turned that into a data standard for the company and we took it beyond Europe, around the world. So think about the crypto winter. So we are 15 minutes in and uh, we haven't talked about crypto. So uh, the, that's ch second check mark. Um, so we're there. Um, and you know, part of why some of this, I think, it's fair to say uh, that trust was lost uh, throughout the crypto winter and some of the uh, failures of some of the exchanges. I think cl a regulatory clarity would be a good thing. But I think it will always be true that technology is faster than regulation. Mm -hmm. So this is where this GDPR example comes in the middle. I think we need to lean in, be responsible, find the common threats, talk to multilaterals like you, uh, Magda, and your team to regulators and so forth. So I'm gonna put my tie on uh, later on and talk to more central bank governors <laughs> about exactly these kind of topics. Now, you, you, you're perfectly right. And uh, I, I would just to illustrate how, how important it is. On some of the financial uh, inclusion uh, experience that was most successful and quoted often in Africa, in Kenya. In fact, the technical solution existed somewhere else in Africa, actually in West Africa, uh, uh, well before. The difference was the, the central bank uh, attitude towards that. Uh, in Kenya, they accepted to, to have some, some uh, 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 sandbox regulation. In other places, they didn't want to do it. And that's what really I see as a major obstacle for innovation and be able to test it. But also what is interesting in this is that, uh, and you were telling me, I'm just quoting you, Michael, is oh, that you oops. use uh, uh, often what is happening in a, in a or consider as low income countries as a place where you have more innovation that is exported in 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 markets which are supposedly more sophisticated so so knowledge uh, uh, the knowledge process is not linear is not one way as is used and is perceived to be is much more dynamic and that and it brings me to my to something that I didn't mention is the word venture capital and VCs okay and we have seen a fall in VCs in 2022 uh, so this is something that we need to really uh, 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 look into. But unfortunately, even in time when there were, there were uh, 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 a larger, important amount of investment in VCs, only a fraction was going to low-income countries. Only 1% of VC financing was going to Africa. This is something that needs to be changed. And the responsibility is, 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 is multiple. First of all, African billionaire needs to invest more in, in VCs. They don't do enough of that. Secondly, we need to, to attract more capital and create an ecosystem. You know, I take Africa as an example of low-income countries, but it's also applied to South, and South Asia and so forth. We need to create an ecosystem which is more viable. We also, as IFC, trying to do more in that area. We put a fund of $225 million for VCs in Africa and Middle East. We are trying to, to, to do more mobilization of capital, but this is just as a surface. So I think that one of the things that I would like to leave maybe this audience is with is that a lot of the innovations that we are seeing that will be helping for financial inclusion will require more VCs and to partner with, with you and link the banking sector, uh, the traditional banking sector with solutions on financial inclusion that you've developed. A practical, hopeful, outlook and suggestions. So we appreciate the partnership, Maktar, and uh, your driving partnership with many other companies. That That's important. So that broader table is needed. And what's coming out of these conversations with an IFC oftentimes is that innovation can, uh, so inclusion cannot be a choice. Innovation needs to be by design. Um, innovation uh, needs to be just built in what we do because it's long-term business building. Therefore, it makes sense, good sense for business. You're the private sector arm of the World yeah. Bank Group. We're definitely private sector, but we're really including more and more people. We're getting better at it every year. Um, and on that note, we'll leave you to your next panel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.